my name is Eveline Bromsdijk and I'm an advisor of the Roofscape team, which is uh, working for the municipality of Rotterdam for quite some time. Uh, I will give you a short introduction in uh, the way we have developed the uh, Green Roofs program into a multifunctional roofscape program. Um, and what we will focus on today is um, uh, defining the values uh, that we have found by using the roofscape. Um, what I would like to ask you is to uh, use the chat to um, ask questions or um, uh, inform us about the expectations you have uh, about the information uh, you would like to receive during this session and then we can um, pick those up either during the uh, introduction and presentations or uh, afterwards when we uh, will have a short dialogue. Tom, everything is working. Thank you so much. Okay, so I wanted to introduce Rotterdam uh, to you since we um, promised to have an international session. Uh, we are a Delta city. Um, most of the city is below sea level, approximately 80% of it. Um, and we are used to deal with, dealing with uh, water it comes from four ways, rising uh, sea level, rising rivers, um, uh, groundwater, and uh, of course, increasingly extreme uh, rain events. So everything that we develop in the city is always uh, water related. Therefore, uh, we started the Green Roofs program back in 2008, and it ran until 2016. And what we were aiming for is to optimize the sponge function of the city on top of the robust uh, sewer system that the city has. Um, we wanted to um, uh, stimulate um, green roofs to prevent flooding during extreme weather events um, and, and um, adding rainwater storage capacity. Uh, we had four focus points, a subsidized program, uh, communication, monitoring and uh, setting good examples. Uh, the subsidized program was very important because when you look at the um, difference um, or the balance between private uh, owned buildings and public owned buildings. It is um, roughly 40% owned by the municipality and 60 is privately owned. So when you want to optimize the sponge function of the whole city, you need to include both uh, public and private buildings. The relevance of it, yeah, yeah. The relevance of it, um, I included a few examples that uh, occurred in, um, in Europe the last 10 years. This happened in, uh, in Copenhagen, extreme rainfall, incredibly uh, uh, damage. We had a serious flooding in 2015 in the UK. And in 2016, Paris was flooded as well. So what we have been aiming for with our um, program is to prevent this and to prevent this extreme damage by implementing it um, uh, in an early stage. In 2016, we made a few, a few first steps 
towards a more um, integral approach and we defined four functions. Um, now um, we have developed it even more and the current program that we are running is the multifunctional roof state program um, that ends in 2022. We try to include as uh, much council targets uh, as we have, um, for example, um, uh, air quality, energy transition, um, uh, but also uh, the need for new, uh, new housing, affordable housing. Um, and uh, when you look at this uh, uh, figure, you see um, how integrated the, our approach is and what we are aiming for to take into account. The functions that we have um, uh, um, pointed out are, of course, the green roofs, uh, which provide green biodiversity benefits, etc. Uh, blue roofs are for um, uh, storing extra uh, water during the rainfall events. Yellow roofs for uh, clean energy red roofs for social functions, which is especially uh, something that we uh, use in our approach in the city center um, for recreational benefits. Orange functions for mobility. Purple roofs for residential roofs, um, like tiny houses. Uh, on top of rooftops, for instance, and the grey roofs we included as well, um, meaning that we take the technology into account as well. What we are aiming for is to uh, create awareness that it is not always one function that you have to uh, choose, but that you can combine several functions based on the uh, challenges that certain areas face and by doing so you can create golden combinations for example a green roof that also um, uh, includes solar panels has a better um, uh, business case uh, because of the cooling effect of the of the green roof What we have been searching for is the uh, role that we should take um, as a municipality and the types of stimulation. Uh, of course, we started with a subsidized program, um, but on the uh, long term, we also uh, look at things like uh, tax differentiation. differentiation. Um, we included it into um, one of the European programs, Life at Urban Roofs. And my colleague Marlou Schout will explain more uh, about that uh, project because she has been working on it for quite some time. So Marlou, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anthony. Okay. Um, yeah. So now I will explain the Life at Urban Roofs program. Um, it's a European subsidized uh, program, and the goal of this program is to inspire and convince private parties to invest in the development of multifunctional roofs. Uh, and well, so we can become a resilient climate adaptive city. Um, and the main um, component of this subsidy program is the social cost benefit analysis, in which we want to gain insight in the value of multifunctional roofs and the division of benefits for parties. Um, we want to use it as a negotiation tool. So if you, for example, go to a party and you have an insight in what which benefits there are, um, you can, for example, um, negotiate with the hotel owner if he can use a rooftop for his hotel. Maybe he wants to uh, invest in this rooftop. Um, here I have the website of our project. Um, unfortunately, I think currently the English uh, version is not available, but we will hopefully have this back online soon. Um, so 
So this is the collaboration uh, of the parties in life at Urban Roof. So we also participate with a few buildings uh, as a municipality, but we also have um, a real uh, commercial real estate developer, the Rotterdamse Vastgoedmaatschappij. We have a very big housing corporation, Vestia. Um, we have an um, association, Stichting Gebouw de Heuvel. And our uh, partner city in Denmark is the city of Veijen. Um, so in this uh, project, we have different levels of uh, roofs or different levels of, of buildings actually. So the first picture you see is the Robert Feinstraat and this is a climate adaptive street or it's uh, a climate ad adaptive si the city uh, street to come because at the moment you see a lot of tiles but we uh, developed the street as a very uh, well, green and uh, especially focused on water uh, street and also we want to develop the rooftops as part of this uh, plan and uh, the city of the uh, neighborhood it's actually a very big building the paper clip but it's such a big building that we consider this as a, as a neighborhood because there are like how many households? I don't remember, but there are a lot. <laughs> um, and on the right, you see uh, the building in the city center that's an association called uh, the Heuvel. And they host all kind of, uh, well, it's, it's more like a, a social um, building. Uh, so on three different levels, we want to uh, find out what's the social cost benefit analysis of creating a multifunctional rooftop here. I do know the details about uh, the paper clip. If I'm not mistaken, it's... You would just buy on yeah. what you need. Okay. <laughs> I think if I'm not mistaken, the details of the paper clip uh, building are about 125 different nationalities living in 450 apartments that's okay. basically it thank you Adrian. you're welcome <laughs> um so this is the robert feinstraat uh here you can see the whole concept of the street and the roofs are are part of it um actually um we want to collect here the rain on the roofs and then we store them in the street in a um yeah, a combination of the, the the cables and water. So that's quite unique uh, for Rotterdam. And then we store the water in the deep uh, underground. So in 20 meters below ground level. And that's quite an innovative concept. We have it on, I think, two other locations in Rotterdam. And we want to find out if it also works on this street. And in the middle, we want to really create a space for the residents so they have a green space where they can, well, um, meet each other and then you improve the social cohesion in the street. Um, yeah, I wanted to show the movie, but I will try to find it and maybe if uh, Robert has uh, time left, we can uh, show it later. And here you can see some photos of the roof on the one of the buildings in the Robert Kreistad. Um It was supposed to be a bi um, biodiverse roof, but unfortunately uh, it's mostly sedum and all the other herbs and grasses, they didn't survive on this roof. So that's for us al also interesting to test. Uh, of course, a pity, but yeah, it's, it's still green. So that's uh, good. Uh, and here is another roof. Um, it looks a bit um, minimal, but that's because uh, the bearing load of the roof was not sufficient for a very big green roof. So here we wanted to show that even if there's little possible uh, because of the bearing capacity, it's still possible to do something on your roof. And this, the people in the building uh, were complaining on and hopefully the roof um, helps a little bit to reduce the temperature in the building. Um, and this is the result of the roof on the paper clip. It's the 
in on the right you can read here Langs Natuurdag, which means it's the biggest uh, nature roof of the Netherlands. And as you can see, it still has some uh, time. Uh, yeah, it, it should grow a bit before it gets really green, but then it will probably look a bit like um, like the other building in the Robert Kleinstraat. Um, yeah, that was it uh, for uh, my side. Um, I think we continue with uh, Robert's presentation. Um, shall we first uh, do questions or shall we continue? Uh, um, I think it's a good plan to do some questions. So you can pick a few from, uh, from the chat if you want. Um, I see a few questions. Yeah, I'm sorry that the sheets couldn't be full size. I think Robert uh, is uh, mastering this, so the next slide will be full size, but for me it was not possible. So I hope you still could follow. Um, thank you for the compliment, Dick. <laughs> um, and what's the plan for the paper clip? I think we just uh, showed the roof and the Robert Kleinstadt is also involved in the mobility plan. Um, well, no, we didn't particularly. Uh, um, well, this the concept of the street was really based on the water concept, so green water, and also the combination of solar panels on on the roofs. And I think mobility was less important. Uh, and maybe we should explain what we mean. We, we try to keep, keep our presentations rather short to give uh, Robert more time to explain about the social cost benefit because we believe that's the most inter interesting part of today's session. Um, but uh, with mobility, um, uh, we realize that uh, when you look at the bigger companies like Amazon um, who have package delivery, they might... Um, become interested in package delivery on roofs because in the countryside you can just land on fields but in cities you cannot land drones just on on street level um, besides that we are also looking on connecting uh, buildings by bridges so uh, you can have a second layer in the in the city where you can walk from one roof to another if we have time, we can uh, try to find an example that um, gives you more insight in that. Okay, I see another question. Um, what are the biggest challenges that you experienced so far? Um, one of the biggest uh, challenges that we always face is the um, construction. And um, most roofs are not constructed to, um, uh, or with a, a uh, roofs are used heavily. Um, so we always have to take into account what the possibilities are. Um, what we have been working towards is the uh, fact that when you are a private house owner, and you buy a house and you renovate it, you are willing to invest in it. And you're willing to invest in a new bathroom and a new kitchen because you believe that it adds quality to your way of life. And we try to include the roofscape into it because right now, basically it's unused space. And that awareness is um, um, increasing and therefore the willingness uh, from the uh, people in Rotterdam to invest in their uh, roofscape as well and to give it proper functions. Okay. Um, yeah, the rest of the challenges, I think that we uh, will discuss them during the social cost benefit analysis. Sure. Uh, part of it is when uh, you have different real estate owners like housing corporations that invest and the benefits end up uh, with the people living in their homes and, and that dialogue is, is 
more difficult than the ones who invest and have a, a direct benefit of the um, added value that you create. Okay, I think uh, Robert, you can. Uh... Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, thanks, Caroline. I'll fire up my presentation. Let me see. Yes. Is this clear? Okay, yes. great. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you all something about the social cost benefits analysis we developed uh, specifically for multifunctional roofs uh, for the Life at Urban Roofs program. Um, basically what we were asked to do uh, is to provide some insight in what investment is needed for a sustainable multifunctional roof um what benefits uh such a roof will bring uh, for the building but also for the wider um uh social context um and then to provide some insight in uh what the balance of these costs and benefits are uh, so what we did is uh initially we investigated uh, the five cases um, Marluz already told you about. Uh, so again, you see uh, the paper clip here, um, Gebouw de Heuvel and uh, Robert Vrijstraat, which houses three cases. Uh, later, we, um, we added another few cases of which I'll show you a few. Um, and for each of the cases, we looked at the financial business case. So uh, if you were to be the investor or the owner of uh, the building, uh, the actual uh, uh, money that you will have to invest and that you will get out of your investment over a period of time. And also the, SC the SCBA, so uh, the social cost and ben benefits. Um, I'll go into that uh, further down this pre presentation. Um, and to support the development of multifunctional roofs, uh, we brought all this together in a generic uh, calculation tool, uh, which is already available for download, I think, uh, for one or two years. So everyone can work with that if you want. Um, so again, the five pilots. Um, I'll not go too deep into this because my roofs already uh, explained uh, uh, some of them as you can see they're quite uh, varied in uh, in size and location uh, and configuration um, a lot of the so social costs and benefits uh, we derived from the concept of the e ecosystem ser 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 services so the services that uh, green and blue infrastructure brings um, this can, for example, be provisioning ser ser services, uh, as you can see here on the slide, can be food, raw materials, fresh, fresh water, etc. Uh, more regulating services, which uh, directly uh, relate to climate adaptation. So, for example, the retention uh, of, uh, of rainwater during extreme rainfall events. Um, and supporting ser services which can increase biodiversity and cultural services uh, which bring extra value uh, mostly to, uh, to humans. Um, so we did a lot of uh, re research and from that we derived uh, more than 20 uh, values. And you see them here, uh, all lined up from quite hard value that you can see is, uh, for example, real estate value to more soft, uh, such as uh, social cohesion. So um, adding, for example, um, or making your roof accessible. Uh, by doing that, you can uh, allow people to uh, meet there, which uh, will add to the social cohesion in an area area of course there are also uh, costs and um, we'll go into that a bit la later um, what's also quite interesting what we found from one of the cases so there's also a clear value in the time that it will take uh, to implement a green project uh, so what we saw for example in the 
Robert Freinstadt is that uh, pro projects that would include a green roof uh, were perceived more positive um, uh, by the neighborhood. Uh, and therefore, there were less um, uh, appeals to the development. Uh, so that saves a lot of time and money, of course. Um, in these values that I showed, there is a clear difference that we should make. Of course, we all know uh, the difference between uh, qualitative and quantitative value. Uh, uh, but from these quantitative values based on research, we can uh, put some of these num numbers into, uh, into money, into, into euros. Uh, of course, you can do this, uh, but then it's still the trick. Will someone actually pay you that money when you uh, construct a multifunctional roof? Uh, and often um, there are, we still have to find ways to make that possible. So for example, we can cal cal calculate the effect that a uh, multifunctional roof with solar panels uh, will have on air quality, but um, you can also put it into euros uh, based on, for example, uh, the price of uh, CO2 uh, emissions, but still there won't be some, some someone that will give you actually that money at the moment that you put your multifunctional roof up. Um, on the other hand, uh, through subsidies, of course, some of these things are uh, negotiated. Um, so from the um, values that I showed earlier, uh, these are the values that we were put, uh, that we were able to put into, uh, into euros, and we'll go into a few of them. So for example, the real estate value which can go up uh, when uh, the view from uh, from any building to your roof uh, is uh, influenced positively. Uh, so we know that a, a green uh, surrounding surrounding is uh, will yield a higher real estate value. So you can calculate with that. Um, there's also a lot of research into uh, avoided productivity loss. Uh, so we know that uh, green environment has a positive uh, value on uh, uh, mental well-being. Um, you can calculate this back to uh, to the prevention of uh, productivity for a potential pa patient. Another interesting one is the avoided spatial claim for water retention. Um, in very densely built inner city areas, it can be really expensive to um, to create additional uh, water retention uh, in the case of extreme rain. Um, so actually what one of the water boards uh, and uh, local municipality said, well, for us it's worth about 500 euros for each cubic meter of water retention that you create on your roof because um, then we don't have to create that room and make these costs um, in the under or upper ground of our public space. Uh, and this is then deemed more cost effective. So that's also an uh, interesting uh, example of how you can uh, bring cost in or bring uh, values to, uh, to money. Um, of course, the big trick is to see how your financial business case and SCBA come closer together. So on the left side of the line, you see all the, all the costs. I see this is still in Dutch, by the way. Uh, the costs, so your investment costs, your um, uh, management costs, uh, and some of the returns uh, that you will get in your financial business business case, uh, which is in this case only uh, what you will get from uh, the energy if you uh, produce any on your roof uh, and perhaps if you have some exploitation, uh, exploitation before, uh, for example, for a rooftop bar. Um, at the right you see all these uh, social values, but 
Um, although they do add a lot to uh, the social context, um, they don't actually bring in money for the uh, investor. And that will be uh, a very important uh, assignment for uh, the future. Of course, it's also that um, you don't ne necessarily have to put everything into money. Um, uh, multifunctional roofs also clearly has a pure uh, aesthetic value. Um, uh, so it's not only about the roofs. Uh, in general, what we see is that um, the financial business case for multifunctional roofs is uh, negative, but the social uh, cost benefit analysis will result in a positive. Uh, uh, result um, and to calculate all this um, we made a generic tool of course also based on the on the rooftop uh, color typology uh, that uh, Caroline told us about and in this way you can uh, analyze your roof um, see what functions it uh, houses uh, and gain insight in for example here the uh, financial business case for a set period of, in this case, uh, 30 years, it will give you your energy uh, uh, yields uh, and the cost that you make. But also, of course, the, the SCBA, uh, so uh, mostly in quantitative value, uh, but also some qualitative. Um, and um, in the cases we investigated, this was also used to um, further uh, make arguments to the decision to invest whether or not. Um, I'll show you one example, which is the Massilo building, uh, a very iconic building in Rotterdam. And it has the big advantage of uh, that uh, it's a very strong building. So actually you can do a lot on this roof. Um, because um, uh, there's a, a very big uh, over dimension in the construction. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, some uh, landscape architects were hired, uh, a competition was set, set out, um, and there are all kinds of designs for a sky garden, an event deck, a sky farm, uh, and so, so on. And what we did is, uh, uh, here you can see a section of the proposal. What we did is we uh, calculated two alternatives. What will yield uh, the best case if we make the roof uh, publicly accessible or limited to private use by the tenants of the building. Uh, in this case, uh, the alternative where the roof becomes publicly accessible um, had the most uh, social uh, um, uh, gains as a result. Um, and that was the example. So I hope I um, uh, I learned uh, or um, um, yeah, I could learn something about the uh, social values that, uh, that come with an urban roof. Um, and if you have qu any questions, then you can put them through through the chat. And I think it was all clear <laughs> because <laughs> there are no questions. Is there anyone who has got any questions left to ask about the social cost benefit analysis or the policy? Could you please provide a bit more detail with your rain retention example? Um, so normally, um, specifically in very dense inner city areas, um, municipalities are really lo looking to um, to store rainwater to increase buffering. 
to prevent uh, damage to uh, to houses or or roads from not being um, accessible anymore in the uh, when an extreme downpour hits. Um, but of course, this will cost you. Uh, and uh, specifically, when there is a lot of spatial claim on uh, on an area, because um, it's built up, uh, there are parks, there is uh, there is a road. Um, then it can be very costly uh, to create additional water retention. So instead of making extra costs um, in the uh, in the outside. Area, area. Uh, municipalities and water boards are willing to to sponsor you uh, to avoid them to uh, to make big uh, to make larger investment co cost. Um, from a few sources, this uh, we source that this could amount up to five hundred euros for each uh, cubic meter of rainwater retention that you create on your roof. Of course, it's, these are these are a lot of square meters because uh, you need a lot of square meters to store one cubic meter on the roof. And then there's a question from Peter: What do you think is needed to create a more positive, healthy business case for multifunctional roofs? Yeah, it's a it's a great question. I was uh, answer with my colleague uh, Marlous. Um, what I would like to add about the um, rain retention example, when we started the Green Roof Program back in 2008, we started with a subsidized program where we had a water storage demand of 15 liters per square meter. And the current demand is 30 liters per square meter. And um, in another subsidized program, we have um, um, a polar roof or a dynamic retention roof that kind of holds between the 60 and the 80 liters per square meter. And we think those are the numbers that really add up when you are working on uh, water management uh, related topics. Um, the challenge that we face right now uh, to come back to the question, uh, which creates a healthy business case is um, to integrate all kinds of um, possibilities it offers because basically it is unused space and in Rotterdam we have 18 and a half square kilometer of roofscape um, waiting for us to give it a proper function and what we are aiming for is to integrate all the challenges that we face lack of space energy transition economical aspects, the uh, social challenges, the uh, climate aspects, and make a comprehensive plan. And um, that is what we are currently uh, are aiming for, to, to uh, try to get uh, all the different programs looking into the same direction and, and working together. That's a great question for you, uh, Marloes. Marloes is working on uh, biodiversity, so I would like to uh, uh, let her answer the, the question about the decreasing competition between species in relation to the, to the roofscape. Okay, um, yeah, so as I said, we also focus now on how we can um, increase biodiversity in the city of Rotterdam uh, with rooftops. And what is also interesting is that the social cost benefit analysis uh, developed by Arcadis now is also uh, increased, uh, or especially being developed on the biodiversity component. Uh, so maybe, Robert, you can maybe also uh, tell something about that or. Sorry, Marius, again. So, uh, well, the question is, do you think green rooftops can help with decreasing competition between species? I, I guess it uh, has to do with biodiversity and how rooftops can be, uh, uh, well, can help biodiversity. 
-hmm. And I just said that you're uh, especially um, developing this biodiversity component in the tool. Um, yeah, we're seeing how we can incorporate it in the next version of the tool. That's true. Um, although I'm not sure about uh, competition between spe species, what we saw on the um, on the paper clip is that actually uh, four types of, of uh, specific uh, habitats were created uh, throughout the roof. So in that sense, um, uh, I think roofs can uh, contribute to that goal. Yeah. So maybe a nice um, example we found um, on the medical center. Medical center, uh, we found a new species of, uh, well, some type of bee. Actually, it was a wasp, and. Um, so, so we see uh, that the rooftop can especially be a habitat for a species. So I think indeed um, the rooftops can be a, a habitat for, um, or yeah, a habitat for species. Also, um, well, I invest. I particularly have knowledge about the bees, and uh, depending on the stepping stones you create, both on ground level and on the on the roofs, can uh, well create uh, nice uh, living areas for those uh, insects. Uh, does that, um, yeah, it answers the question really nice. Okay. Um, any other questions? Um, I didn't find the, the movie yet, unfortunately. <laughs> so that would have been a nice um, end of the session, but um, I see we only have three minutes left. So maybe some other um, listener has a question about the Roofscape program or about the tool itself. Um, maybe I can put the uh, link of the website again, so you can also see where you can find more information about the Life at Urban Roof project. I will uh, look it up. Okay, so this is our website. Now it's all in Dutch, but here, um, well, hopefully it will be in English English soon because we had we had it, but now it's gone. Oh, here it is. Uh, I can still show the movie, but it's in uh, in Dutch, so I will uh, show it. It will. It's only one or two seconds. Klimaat verandert en dat betekent vaker extreem nat of droog weer. Rotterdam bereidt zich daarop voor, zoals hier in de Robert Vrijmstraat. Kijk maar eens op deze daken. Op dit dak wordt elke zonnestraal direct omgezet naar energie. Hier komt de buurt gezellig samen en we zetten plantjes neer. Dat zorgt voor een beetje verkoeling. Al dat groen vangt ook water op als het regent. En die neerslag gaat niet zomaar verloren. Het wordt allemaal opgevangen in deze waterberging. Als die vol is, lapt het water hier naar beneden. Naar deze kratten onder de grond. Om het water te zuiveren gaat het door het plantenvak heen. En eenmaal schoon wordt het opgevangen in deze waterbel. Hier bewaren we het 20 meter onder de grond. Zodat het boven de grond weer gebruikt kan worden. Als het weer erg droog is. Deze productie is mede mogelijk gemaakt door de bijdrage van het live programma van de Europese Unie. Okay, so um, that was the Robert Freinschat. So as you can see, we have more buildings with uh, well, all kind of non-functional purposes. I just showed the green roofs now, but there's more. Uh, but I didn't have a picture so far. Um, so I think uh, we can finish the session now since it's one minute to uh, five. So I would, would like to thank you for uh, participating in this uh, session. And, uh,
Well, enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.